Hey there, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen around the world. It is once again time for the Netflix. I am Josh, your host for the evening. Follow me at Skidgamic on Twitter. Hey, how's it going? If you are new to this particular program, the Netflix is the... Well, it's not the only place, or maybe not even particularly the best place. But it is a place you can go to find out what's coming on to the Netflix Instant Streaming in the U.S. Sorry, Canada. This week, until next Monday, you know, I'll do a little Monday to Sunday thing. Give you the titles that you can look forward to. Some you need to add to your list right away. Some, maybe not so much, but I make sure you get them all. And this week is no exception. And because it's a big drop week, I got I got to be honest, there, there were too many titles to really pull up graphics for all of them. So I was like, you know what? If you're watching on the Facebook page, Simicore Live, Facebook Live, or Simicore Studios on Facebook Live, hey, What's up, everybody? Glad you could join us. Anyway, long story short, too much art. I don't exactly have a supercomputer, you know. On the first, it's always the big drop. That's uh, when you get the most in one day, most content in one day. But I'm going to begin, like I always do, with suggestions, recommendations, even... Last week, I recommended Lucifer, and you know what? I still do. Still an awesome show, and I am, I'd say, about halfway through the fourth season. It's, whew, it, it's good. <laughs> it is really good. Uh, the kind of show that makes you look back and go, am I the devil? Okay, not really, but... I'm 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 really digging that show, and I'm very glad that I recommended it last week. It was well worth the recommendation. Well, this week uh, for my Netflix original, it's kind of a cheat. It's it's kind of um you know a backdoor original. I hate and I really really hate to put it like that, but it is uh, Gilbert Kai was a YouTube Red series, got picked up by Netflix, and now the first two seasons are available for you to watch. I know a lot of people have been binge-watching Cobra Kai, and I've yet to finish it. So, please, no spoilers. Uh, I look forward to it, though, to, to finishing it up, but, you know, Lucifer, Lucifer's kind of got my attention for now. So that is my Netflix original uh, pick for the week for for those unaware of what Cobra Kai is. It is uh, basically the continuation of the OG Karate Kid movies with uh, Daniel LaRusso and uh, the Cobra Kai dojo and rivalries heating up from back when. It's yeah, out of, out of everything that's been coming out of Hollywood. I think my favorite thing isn't necessarily the, the the retelling of stories that we've seen told before, but rather the continuation of stories that we've seen before. I would I would honestly much rather revisit um, a character, a place, a time, rather than remake it. Um, that's that's just me though. That's why. You know, Fuller Fuller House. I was I was down for. It. I was like, oh, we get to see what the Tanners are up to all these years later. That's that's pretty awesome, and and Netflix made that happen. So now, like I said, it's it's more of a backdoor Netflix original since they just picked it up from another network. But same could be said for Lucifer. So I guess uh, that's two weeks in a row I cheated on my Netflix original recommendations. Whoops. My movie recommendation this week 
is I'm, I'm going to pull a page out of Ben's book and I'm going to make it one of the titles that's coming out this week. And it's about a family. It's a movie about a family. And um, they are from France. You know, there's like 10 of you out there that are, are laughing hysterically right now because you know exactly what I'm talking about. They like to consume mass quantities. And again, to like ten of you out there that are, that are really digging what I'm I'm putting down. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to come up with it. it's Coneheads, based on the Saturday Night Live sketch from the '70s. In the '90s, they made a movie about it, uh, starring Dan Aykroyd, of course. Um, no, I'm not going to go into the full cast then. No, no, and is is it a good movie? No, no, no. Is it a funny movie? Oh yeah, yeah, you betcha. It's it's absolutely hilarious, and it was very much a sign of the times that it was made in. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's it's about a family that comes from France, and they have cone heads. Okay, they're aliens. That think the 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 joke is they are from. You know, they say we are from France. And that is, that's the joke. Yeah, it's kind of a one-note joke throughout the entire movie. But, you know, that's all the sketch was, really. And, you know, honestly, SNL sketches turned into movies are... Hmm. I don't want to say they're hit and, hit and miss, because I'd say they're all pretty solid... You know, with their quality. Uh, so they're either a hit or gargantuan. And, uh, of course, by that I mean like Wayne's World. Wayne's World really became a classic, classic movie. Uh, and that stemmed from an SNL sketch. Due to the uh, the work of Mike Myers and Danny Carvey, Tia Carrera, you know, Rob Lowe. <clears throat> It, it it's it's good. It's really good. Long story short. Okay, so my TV recommendation. You know, I had one in mind, but it, it just seems so woefully inadequate right now because, honestly, I'm not really sure if it's even on Netflix anymore. So I'm going to do something that I don't normally like to do, and... I am going to recommend something that I have recommended before. Just in case someone might have missed it, I am still going to recommend the IT Crowd. I might have recommended it twice before. All I'm saying is check out the IT Crowd. Because it is brilliant. Absolutely, epically brilliant. I know, I know. It's weird, too. And, um, as Moss would say, I like being weird. Weird's all I've got. That and my sweet, sweet moves. There's like four or five of you that are just rolling over right now, and, 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 you're, and you think this is the best thing ever. So those are my recommendations this week. Uh, that's, of course, Cobra Kai... Coneheads and the IT crowd. Uh, just a quick note. Um, you know, I might be moving the shows up a little bit as far as time goes. At least everything that's happening during the weekday, Semicore Studios wise, because I'm tired. So I might be moving things up to like 9 p.m. Eastern, that sort of thing. Uh, just thought I'd let you know in case I do make that uh, that final decision sometime in the near future. I also saw uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, by the way, excellent, excellent adventure <laughs> for them, uh, pun very much intended, and I, I recommend it. It's 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 exactly the movie we as a society need at this point in time. It carries a very solid message. 
In my opinion. In my opinion. Okay. You know what we're going to do now? You know, it's that time. It's that time to get down to what's coming out in Netflix over the next six-ish days on the old Netflix instant streaming. You know what? Before I do that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say check out SimicoreStudios.com and SimicorePods.com for the podcast associated with SimicoreStudios.com. And if you like what you see, you know, head on over to the Facebook, facebook.com slash Simicore Studios. Give it a like. Find out when we're going live. Check out the sometimes visual images that I share with the show uh, while it's on Facebook Live. I, I Not tonight. There are so many. But I guarantee you next week there's going to be like a movie poster or something representing the stuff that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, not sure I've got to say about that. So, starting, I, I didn't see anything coming out today, so sorry, sorry, sorry about that, sorry about that, sorry Canada, again. Okay, starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow, September 1st, we're going to go ahead and get started with the first... It is 2018 Adrift, rated PG-13, just over 90 minutes in an action-adventure biopic uh, starring Shailene Woodley and Sam Claflin. Has an all 6.6 on the old IMDb, and it's a true story. <clears throat> I better get the right voice for this. A true story of survival, as a young couple's chance encounter leads them to leads them first to love, and then on the adventure of a lifetime as they face one of the most catastrophic hurricanes in recorded history. Adrift, a love story set in a hurricane, with middling reactions. Directed by Balthazar Cormacor. It uh, was nominated for five awards. Golden Trailer Award, Teen Choice Award, Women Film Critics Circle Award, that kind of stuff. So, bam. Adrift. Next up, as long as you're not looking to watch like a good movie, Anaconda, 1997, rated PG-13. An hour 29 minutes, rated 4.8, 4.8, 4.8 on the old IMDb. Um, a National Geographic film crew is taken hostage by an insane hunter who forces them along on his quest to capture the world's largest and deadliest snake. Yeah, it's a big old snake movie. Most notable because it's um, it's a, it's a Jennifer Lopez flick with John Voight, Eric Stoltz, directed by Luis Yosa, uh, written by Bauer and Cash. Yeah. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. There's definitely a moment at the end where it's like, oh, that was, that was just bad. But if you're into cheesy, you know, little, I don't, is it really a monster movie even? Because you know, it, it says it's a horror movie. I don't, I don't see that. Big old snake eats people. If that sounds like it's your jam, then you know you've well, you've probably already seen it. But you, it's going to come to Netflix, and it'll be your jam again whenever you want until it leaves. So Anaconda coming out on the first. Next up, only the greatest sci-fi trilogy of all time. Nay, the greatest trilogy of all time. No messages, so I guess Brandon's not listening. Uh, well, it's Back to the Future. Back to the Future, Back to the Future Part 2, and Back to, Back to the Future Part 3. The trilogy 
of time travel movie starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, and a slew of others directed by Robert Zemeckis, written by Zemeckis and Gale. It is the greatest trilogy of all time. Okay, if for some strange reason I had to tell you what Back to the Future was about, I guess I'll sum it, la- sum it up like this. In the first one, Marty accidentally goes back in time in a DeLorean time machine. Prevents his parents from hooking up, so he has to re-hook up his parents uh, in order for him to be, you know, born. In the second one, Doc comes from the future, and he's like, Marty, you gotta come with me. And his Marty's girlfriend, Jennifer, is like, what are you talking about, you crazy old man? And he's like, something's got to be done about your kids, Marty. And Marty's like, hot sock. What are they, like, assholes or something? Sorry. That's, that's just what he says. And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's it. You, you got to go fix your kids. So they go to the future, which is, you know, technically now five years ago. Yeah, their future was 2015. And here we are, like, that would have been nice. Yep. So, yeah, back to the future part two. They go to the future, and then stuff happens. You know, I don't want to get into spoilery stuff for a 20-something-year movie. And, I think, 21? 21 years? No, it would be 31, would it? 31 years, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where the time goes either. Anyway, part three, they go to the Wild West. Yeah, that's that's the Back to the Future trilogy right there. Um, if you want to know where Rick and, Rick and Morty got the, you know, the idea for old man scientist and teenager to travel about through, you know, whatever, there's probably some... Uh, inspiration lifted from Back to the Future. Especially since since Marty's mom was to, you know, you know. Or you might not know, so I'm not going to spoil it. But Back to the Future, available tomorrow. Congratulations. You've made it to the next level. Up next... Not, oh, and by the way, those movies, perfect 10. That's the only thing you need to know. They're perfect. Sit down with the kids, watch them. They're perfect. I don't care what brand it says. Yes, yes, they are perfect. And yes, I know Brandon's usually right about these things. Shut up. Anyway, Barbershop. From 2002, rated PG-13, um, about one and uh, one and three quarter hours, six point three out of ten. I think that is um, a little low, honestly. I, I I'd put it up there with the you know mid sevens. Just my opinion, though. Six point three on the old IMDb. Comedy. It's a comedy. I don't know why I'm saying drama. It's a comedy, and it's a day in the life of a South Side Chicago barber shop. Starring Ice Cube, Cedric the Entertainer, Eve. Directed by Tim Story. Written by Mark Brown. That's that's pretty much the gist of it. You see Ice Cube and Cedric the Entertainer in there. And you know it's going to be... It's going to be pretty funny. And... It's in a barbershop. You know what it is. It shouldn't have to be spelled out for you like that. So that's coming out tomorrow. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure everything is all, you know, straightened out so I can deliver this excellent uh, information. Okay, well, something with that is not rated on the old IMDb. And it doesn't have a MPAA rating. 
but it's coming out tomorrow. Barbie Princess Adventure. Whether you're a kid or a kid at heart, sing along with Barbie in the all-new musical movie Barbie Princess Adventure. The adventure begins when Barbie and her friends travel to the country of Floravia to meet Princess Amelia. You know what? I think that's all I'm going to read. Barbie Princess Adventure available on the 1st. I think you know if it's for you. Okay, next up, also available on the 1st, Bookmarks. Bookmarks, it is the first season of this new Netflix original preschool series retelling black stories and it reads as follows no rating by the way prominent black celebrities and artists read children's books from black authors that highlight the black experience conversations center around themes of identity respect justice and action starring Karama about Karamo Brown, Grace Myers, and Common. So, long story short, I have no idea what it's about. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It said several times in the uh, different uh, releases exactly what it's about. I mean, it's, it's for preschoolers. Is it something up my alley? It's, I'm not a preschooler, but... Will I give it a shot? I'm not a preschooler. No, don't call me. No. Being a jiggis right now. <laughs> but bookmarks, it's definitely something to watch with the kids. Um, who knows? Maybe you'll find something. Maybe you'll learn something, too. Um, up next... Blue Exorcist Season 2. That's got an A7.5 in the old IMDb. Uh, TV 14, 30 minute episodes, 25 episodes, apparently. After, after discovering that he's the son of Satan, hmm, seems to be a theme lately. A young man must join the True Cross Academy in order to master his abilities and defeat Satan himself. There you go. It's an anime. Um, i got to be honest. I'm not really sure how to read Danish. So, I want to say this is called Borgen. It can't be right, can it? Yeah. Well, the first three seasons of Borgen are going to be available on the first... Um, it, it's a highly rated 8.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb TV 14 hour long drama. Borgen? Um, it, it, um, it was created by Adam Price and it's a, a, poli <clears throat> a political drama about a prime minister's rise to power and how her power changes a prime minister. You know, at first I thought I was on something there, you know, with voice, but then it just kind of got away from me. But it stars Sidsi Babette Knudsen, um, Birgit Hjort Sorensen, uh, Emil Poulsen, Freya Riemann, Soren Malling. Yeah, so. Borgen, 8.5. It's pretty highly rated. I'm, I might actually... <laughs> I might actually have to check out an episode or two just because it's so... You know, highly rated. Next up, Children of the Sea. Then the backstage slams in the comment section says, Hello, while I'm feeling like Professor Emmett Brown right now. That's Dr. Emmett L. Brown. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. But it's Dr. Next up, Children of the Sea, 6.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb. A 2019 animated adventure. Uh, it's an anime. A young girl is drawn into a mystery involving sea life around the world 
in which two mysterious boys are somehow involved. Uh, directed by Ayumu Watanabe, um, written by Igarashi and Kino, and starring Mana Ishida, uh, Hiro Ishibashi, and Seishu Arakami. It's uh, got some uh, love at festivals. It's the winner of Best Visual and Sound Effects at the 2020 Faroe Island Film Festival and the winner of the Best anim- Animated Film at the uh, Manichi Film Concours. So, oh, it was nominated for Best Feature at uh, Faroe Island as well. Check it out. Children of the Sea, the anime. Uh, this is... What I said earlier, right? Uh, one of my recommendations. It is Coneheads from 1993, rated PG-13. No, nope, just PG. Rated PG, clocking in at just under 90 minutes. Aliens with conical crania crash land on Earth. That is. That's that's the description. Directed by uh, Steve Barron, Tom Davis. Uh, directed by Steve Barron, written by Tom Davis and Dan Aykroyd, starring Dan Aykroyd, Jane Curtin, Robin Nod, You know, Chris Farley's in there. It's, you know, it's it's got a pretty good who's who. Adam Sandler makes an appearance. David Spade, Phil Harbin, Sinbad, Eddie Griffin, Michael Rich. You know, a lot of people are in the movie. Some small parts, some big parts. Okay, there's no small roles, only small actors, right? Um, <clears throat> it is a 5.3 out of 10. But I'm still going to recommend it. Because I dig this movie. And uh, yeah, I was, what, 11 years old when it came out, but you know what? the kid in me is still going to watch this again with my kids. And you should watch it with your kids because it should be fun. Kids should have fun watching really crazy, silly things. and You know, not not everything has to be so serious. Why so serious? Why so serious? Can you tell? I'm getting a little sleepy. Okay. Uh, okay. Whoa, had a little uh, freak out here because of the chrome and so many taps. Uh, Next up, maybe you've heard of these guys, but a few years ago, 10 years ago, 10 years? Has it been 10 years? Okay, 10 years ago, Robert Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis made a movie together called Due Date 2010, rated R, 95-minute comedy. What does everybody want to put drama in their description? It's a comedy with some dramatic elements, but it's not a drama. But it's a 6.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb. High-strung father-to-be, Peter Hyman, is forced to hitch a ride with aspiring actor... Aspiring actor Ethan Tremblay on a road trip in order to make it to his child's birth on time. Remember planes, trains, and automobiles? Yeah, it's kind of like that. But, you know, for what it is, it's enjoyable. If you like, uh, you know, RDJ or Zach Galifianakis, it's worth a shot if you haven't seen it already. It's, 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 it's exactly the type of comedy you think it is. So, uh, I will be the first to admit that sometimes you just feel like having one of those to watch. And unfortunately, I've seen so many of them. You know, the, um, you've seen it once, so you're like, you know, I'm glad I watched that, but I'm probably not going to watch it again. That kind of thing. Uh, the 90s were chocked full of those type of movies. But the, the weird part is, the the depending on how old you are when you watch it, sometimes it goes from a one and done to something you consider like a classic. I'm not saying people think Due Date's a classic, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone out there that's like, you know, Due Date was my first rated R comedy that I ever got to see, and I think it's classic. It's much better than Caddyshack. And then somebody smacks him right in the mouth, and you know how it goes. They're like, shut your mouth, it's not better than Caddyshack. Speaking of Caddyshack, the next movie up is Glory. You know, talking about a whole... You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to go there. Although I kind of did. With the implication. Anyway, Glory, 1989 biopic drama history. It's not really a biopic. Why does it say that? Um... Two hours and two minutes, 7.8 on the old IMDb. Matthew Broderick, Denzel Washington, Carrie was, and uh, directed by Edward Zick. Screenplay by John Kirstein. Um, it's a movie about the Civil War. Ish. I mean, it's set in the Civil War. It has Civil War fighting, but, you know, it doesn't, like, cover the whole war, you know? But, um, the synapse... Synapse. Synopsis reads as follow. As follow. Robert Gould Shaw leads. <clears throat> Robert Gould Shaw leads the U.S. Civil War's first all-black volunteer company, fighting prejudices prejudices from both his own Union Army and the Confederates. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this out there real quick. Are they saying that the Confederates were so racist that if they, when they saw this all black battalion or all all black company, that they wanted to shoot them on sight? That's terrible. That's terrible. Now the, the you know, of course, that's the joke. Yeah, you know, the rival army, you're gonna want to shoot them anyway. The blue jacket, not necessarily the. You get what I'm saying, because the the bad part about that was you had fellow people in blue jackets that would have liked to do the same thing, and you know what? I can, I can get, get off on this whole commentary, and I, I I don't I don't I don't want to right now. I mean, I want to, but I'm just saying. You would think since since the Civil War, we've we would have come a long, uh, come a, a lot longer. Um, we would have come. See words. Words are hard. You would think since the Civil War, we would have gotten a lot further in our progress in everything. But unfortunately, as we keep saying, that is not really the case. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. So check out a, I mean, a great movie set in the Civil War. And glory. By the way, um, I don't know why I closed that out so quick. It did get... Uh, it won three Oscars. So uh, it was the best actor in a supporting role, Den- Denzel Washington... Um, best cinematography, Freddie Francis, and best sound from Donald o. Mitchell, Greg Rudloff, Elliot Tyson, Russell Williams, um, Garwood and Lewis were nominated for best art direction, and the editing was also nominated well, with Stephen Rosenblum. Uh, Denzel also won the Golden Globe. Um, Best Edited Feature from American Cinema Editors. Um, Best... The British Society of Cinematography. You know what? I'm getting that. You probably just want to hear about the Oscars. Um, I've got chills right now. They're, They're multiplying. And I'm losing control for the power that you're supplying. In 1978, a movie came out that would freak people out for generations to come. That is Grease, 1978, 7.2 in the old IMDb, rated PG. P 
PG. How is this movie rated PG? You hear what these people say in this movie? That is crazy. PG-13 all the way. It's just shy of two hours with a one hour, 50 minute mark. And starring John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John, Stocker Channing. You know, appearances by Frankie Avalon and, uh, what was it? Is it the Kingsman? Um, I don't... Grease is the word that you heard. You know, it's... Fine, I'll stop, I'll stop. If Basically, um, a bunch of 30-year-olds play teenagers... <laughs> Oh, that that oh that just reminds me. Next week it's going to be a really really rough episode um, because I don't. If if you listen to the podcast, then you know all about the conversation that we've had about cuties, as well as the conversation about the um, the feedback that people have been leaving about said movie that has yet to be released. The general consensus on that show, while well, people did. Enter the podcast arena, ready to essentially murder someone. Um, everybody came back from the ledge and decided, you know what? Yes, the poster that was released was hot garbage. But as far as the content of the film, it, it'll be something that can only be commented on after a viewing has been made. Um... It, it's kind of weird, you know, this week. Grease, it is it is a sexual movie. It's, it's very, no, it doesn't have nudity or anything like that, but it's about teenagers, you know, wanting to do it, right? But they're played, like I said, like 30-year-olds. And the movie coming out next week has, like, that opposite thing as far as the casting goes it's um i don't know not ironic i don't know what the word is but interesting to see this movie come out considering what is coming out next week yeah yeah i, I understand they're coming read this okay fine i'll read the, i'll read the damn synopsis Good girl Sandy Olson and greaser Danny Zuko fell in love over the summer when they unexpectedly discover they're now in the same high school, will they be able to rekindle their romance? Directed by Randall Kaiser, written by Jim Jacobs and Warren Casey. I already told you who's in it. It's, um, I mean, it's, it's a mega popular movie. It's, it's, it's classic. Up next, season one of an anime called Erased. It's an anime set in the 1980s where a boy travels back in time to help save his classmates. I dig it. I dig it. There was... There was a show. I don't remember what network, and I don't remember who was in it. It was about... Being a teenager in the 90s, I believe it was. Except, the premise was, um, it started out in whatever present day was at the time. Maybe it was back to the 80s, I don't remember. But, it's about a guy that wakes up in his teenage body back in time. And... I remember one episode, you know, there was like a talent show and he wrote Smells Like Teen Spirit or something. And um, people were freaking out. They're like, oh, this guy's deeply disturbed. So I, I'd like to see more like that. So when... Um, I, I just love time travel. Period. So check out Erased. Can, that actually seems like an anime I'm going to get into. Next up is an anime called Fate Grand Order First Order. It's an anime movie about a new recruit sent back in time to save... Didn't I just... No, I just read that. Oh, yeah, I just read that. 
Sorry, I, I clicked the wrong thing closed, apparently. Uh, next up is a stand-up special from Felipe Esparza. Eh, I probably said that wrong. Felipe Esparza. Yeah, that sounds better. It's called Bad Decisions or Malas Decisiones. It's a stand-up special. From Felipe Esparza. That's, yeah, that's all I got. Um, multiple seasons of the French ensemble comedy H is uh, going to be available on the first. Heidi season two is going to be available on the first. That is, of course, more animated adventures up in the mountains with Heidi. Up next, 2012. Um, Rated R, Magic Mike 6.1 on the old IMDb comedy drama. A male stripper teaches a younger performer how to party, pick up women, and make easy money. Directed by Steven Soderbergh. Written by Reed Carroll and starring Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum um, Alex Pettifer, Olivia Mond, and of course, Big Sexy Kevin Nash. That's right. Wrestling. He's in this one, right? I don't remember. No, I, okay, I haven't seen this. Is he only in the second one? I thought it was in both of them. Oh, Joe Manganiello. He's a cool guy. He was in that new Pee Wee movie. It was, um, it was actually pretty good. Okay, I don't know if Kevin Nash was actually in this. I haven't seen it. I keep saying I'm going to see it just, you know, just to say I've seen it, but I haven't gotten around to it. Also on the first, Muppets Most Wanted, the 2014 film starring, you know, Kermit the Frog here and uh, Miss Piggy and uh, Fuzzy Bear. Waka, waka, waka. And uh, Beaker with... Uh, me, 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 me. Anyway, rated PG-13. It's an adventure comedy. While on a grand world tour, the Muppets find themselves wrapped into a European jewel heist caper headed by a Kermit the Frog here, lookalike, and his dastardly sidekick. Directed by James Bob and written by James Bob and Nicholas Stoller, starring the Muppets, as well as a couple of people you might have heard of before, Ricky Gervais, Ty Burrell, and Tina Fey. Available on the first 6.4 out of 7 on the old IMB. Yes, the other one's going to be available also, but this is alphabetically, as well as by date. We're 40 minutes into this bad boy, and still not done. <laughs> Hopefully, I, uh, uh, people are enjoying themselves at my expense. Maybe, um, maybe the voices... Should I do more voices? Anyway, up next, probably the last great spoof movie. Uh, it came out right around the time, you know, the scary movies and, you know, when they were good. And, uh, this one worked. This one worked very well. It was not another teen movie, 2001. Rated R, as these spoofs should be. Hour and 29 minute comedy. I guess PG 13 is fine as far as Naked Gun goes, you know, things like that. 5.7 on the old IMDb. You know what? I say it's a great movie, but it's still fair because, you know, it gets the comedy from from being knockoff versions of other movies, right? With, it, with a slightly more humorous twist. So, 5.7 out of 10. The lower it gets, it seems, maybe the better it is. I don't know. But a send-up of all the teen movies that have accumulated in the past two decades. So yeah, directed by Joel Gallen, written by Mike Bender and Adam J. Epstein, uh, starring Tyler Lee, Jamie Presley, and Captain America. I'm America. A little stutter there. Captain America himself, Chris Evans. And that's the one where he wore the whip-top bikini? The whip-top. The whip 
whipped cream bikini. I maybe. Let's see what is coming up next. Um, you know what? A this this movie was actually surprisingly great and heartfelt, and I really really dug it. Although certain aspects 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 of it are, we'll say cringy. Pineapple Express, a uh, 2008 film, rated 6.9 out of 10 on the old IMDb, rated R. Shy of two hours, with one hour and 51 minutes, an action comedy drive. It's a stoner movie. Starring Seth Rogen, James Franco, and Gary Cole. Directed by David Gordon Green. Written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. And those are two names that you're probably going to wind up seeing uh, quite a bit when it comes to the Netflix. A process server and his marijuana dealer wind up on the run from Hitman and a corrupt police officer after he witnesses his dealer's boss murder a competitor while trying to serve papers on him. Yeah, that was one sentence. Anywho, like I said, it's it's surprisingly good. I I don't know why I want to say it's surprisingly good, but you know it hits on the stone, stoner comedy pretty well. But it also it also hits on a more standard uh, form of comedy, and and maybe. Just maybe there's a slight tinge of good drama in there for sure, since James Franco being the dealer, he's also kind of a lonely guy, you know, and, and he just kind of wants to be accepted. You know, he's always he's always people's best friend for five minutes, then I think I think that's a pretty interesting way an interesting take on um, these buddy adventures. Uh, up next, 1981, Possession. Surprisingly, uh, again, surprisingly, a decent rating on the IMDb, 7.4 out of 10, rated R, 2 hours, 4 minutes. It's a drama-slash-horror movie. A woman starts exhibiting increasingly disturbing behavior after asking her husband for a divorce. Suspicions of infidelity soon give way to something much more sinister. Directed by Andrzej Zobalski. Also written by him as well. It is called a classic horror movie. Yeah. Classic horror movie. Hmm. Sure. Uh, Puss in Boots. Animated adventure about... Puss in Boots. Rated PG-13. 6.6 on the old IMDb. Starring Antonio Banderas. Salma Hayek. Zach Galifianakis. Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, Amy Sedaris. Constance Marie Guillermo del Toro. Voice actors out the Indian yang essentially. It's, uh, it, you know, it pulled the cast together. Maybe... I, I, I don't want to say it was a bad movie. I can't. It was fine. Kids are gonna dig it, but I don't know if it was a story that really needed to be told. Put it on for the kids. Maybe you'll dig it too if you haven't seen it. Uh, next is Red Dragon. It is the 2002 crime thriller rated R. 2 hours, 4 minutes, 7.2 out of 10 on the old IMDb. Hey, remember a little movie called Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. It's that guy. A retired FBI agent with psychological gifts is assigned to help track down the Tooth Fairy, a a mysterious serial killer. Aiding him is imprisoned forensic psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. Alright, directed by Brett Ratner. This is where it gets funky. Because, I mean, let's face it, Brett Ratner, he's... Hmm. 
<sighs> Rush Hour 3. I said it. X-Men, The Last Stand. Okay, I said it. So there's that. Not exactly known for top-notch stuff. But you know what? Red Dragon actually works, surprisingly. And, and no, I don't have anything against Red Rider. I Nothing. I got nothing. But, I mean, this seems like it was a high point. And I think it deserves all the credit in the world for being able to direct Anthony Hopkins, Edward, Nord's, uh, Edward Orton, and Rilla Fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a compliment. Uh, next up is a little movie called Residue. Or is it a TV series? Hmm. Huh. Unclear. So I'm going to skip that one. And where the heck am I? I'm still on the first, by the way. Still on the freaking first. Next up, Sex Drive. 2008. Uh, directed by Sean Anders. Rated R. Hour and 50 minutes. 6.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb. Starring Josh Zuckerman, Amanda Crew, Clark Duke, Seth Green, and James Marston. A high school senior drives cross-country with his best friends to hook up with a babe he met online. Yeah, that's... That's... Yeah. It's it's, it's an R-rated comedy. You're going to see things. Not for the kids. On the first. Also on the first, a classic UPN show from the 90s. Maybe you've heard of it. Seasons 1 through 6 will be available starring Tia and Tamara Mowry. It's Sister, Sister. A show about twins. You know what? I'm going to watch every freaking episode. Because I love... 90s sitcoms. I said it out loud. Not only did I say it out loud, I said it publicly. And you can't take that back. So Sister Sister is available tomorrow. I will be watching that after I finish up with Lucifer. Also, coming out tomorrow, The Boss Baby. Get that baby. 24-minute uh, short adventure from the Boss Baby crew. Boss Baby. It's about a baby that's the boss. Where's the suit? Yeah. After that, Jesus Christ, so many... The Muppets. I think uh, this one was actually better than um, the um, the Muppets Most Wanted and more heartfelt for Shizzle. No, I don't know why I said that. Uh, rated PG-13, this 2011 movie is an adventure comedy family film. 7.1 on the Yom Dai MDB. I'm, I think that's a little low. A Muppet fanatic, with some help from his two human compatriots, must regroup the Muppet gang to stop an avaricious oil mogul from taking down one of their precious lifelong treasures. Directed by James Bobbin, written by Jason Siegel and Nicholas Stoller, starring Amy Adams, Jason Siegel, and Chris Cooper. This is like an OG Muppets movie right here. On the road, you know, things happening. It... It's a really awesome, awesome movie. There's a guy named Text Richman, so, yeah. It's great, it's great. You can tell, you can tell in the script that 
whoever did it loves not only the Muppets, but the old Muppet movies. And it shows. It shows so hard. Uh, next up is the 2005 version of the Mel Brooks classic The Producer starring Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick Will Ferrell and Uma Thurman you remember Springtime for Hitler yep that's where the well the original but yeah the producers after putting together another Broadway flop, down on his luck, producer Max Bialystok teams up with timid accountant Leo Bloom in a get-rich-quick scheme to put on the world's worst show. So basically, they figured out, figured out that even the worst Broadway shows are profitable. And sometimes, the worse it is, the more money you make. So they go to put on the cheapest musical they can find. And it turns out to be one that's kind of a little pro-Hitler. And they love it because they know that they're going to take a bath. Nobody's going to want to see it anyway. It is brilliant, you know, and as far as remakes go, yes, yes, the original was classic. It's a classic. But you know what? The new one's pretty darn good, too. So, take it for what you will. Next up, The Promised Neverland, Season 1. It's an animated series. A group of the smartest kids at a seemingly perfect orphanage uncover its dark truth when they break a rule to never leave the orphanage grounds. Once the truth is discovered, they begin to plan an escape to save all of the children. 13 episodes, 30 minutes each. TV 14, 8.7 out of 10 on the INDB. So check out Yakusoku no Neverland. A.K.A. The Promised Neverland. The Smurfs, two th- I'm still on the first. I know some of you are like, why is it going on so long? Why didn't you just do the rest some other day? Because this is all the first. This is on the first day. This is this is everything coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow. I love you. Tom- you know, it's... It's crazy. Crazy long list. Next up, The Smurfs. To, the Smurfs. The Smurfs, 2011, 2011 film, rated PG. Uh, hour 43 minutes. Um, adventure comedy, live action, 5.4 out of 10 on the old IMDb's. Starring Neil Patrick Harris, Hank Azaria, directed by... Uh, oh, K- Katy Perry, I guess. Uh, directed by Raja Gosnell. It wasn't bad. Put it on for the kids. They'll dig it. Um, Thomas and Friends, season 24. I really hope I don't need an explanation of these talking trains with faces. And uh, True Friendship. No, True Friendship Day. It's another kid's animated special set in the true world. That is a Netflix original. Wildlife, 2018. Uh, PG-13, hour and 45 minute drama, 6.8 out of 10 in the old IMDb. A teenage boy must deal with his mother's complicated response after his father temporarily abandons them to take a menial and dangerous job. That's quite vague. Okay, it's about a, it's a drama about a te- teenage boy dealing with his father leaving. Man, that's it's a bit easier to digest right there. Uh, Zethura, a space adventure, PG, six point two out of ten, hour forty one minutes, Jumanji in space. Basically, that's yeah. Let's let's just get that out of the way. That's what it is. Okay, that wraps it up for the first. Now we're on to the second. Bad Boy Billionaires India. Netflix original CZ1. It's an Indian docuseries. Uh, also on the second Chef Table's Barbecue Season 1. It's a spin-off of Chef's Table that looks at the world of barbecue. 
I might check that out. I dig some barbecue. I had some the other day. Um, Freaks, You're One of Us, 2020. It's a German superhero movie about a fry cook discovering that she has power. I like superheroes. I like fry cooks. I wouldn't mind checking that out. On the third... See, it's going to go pretty fast now. Uh, um, Afonso... Afonso Padilla, Alma de Pobre, Portuguese stand-up special. So, Portuguese stand-up comedy. Everything that you love. Um, also, on the third, Love Guaranteed, 90-minute comedy romance. No rating from the MPAA. It's a Netflix original film. Debuting. So, on September 3rd, it'll be debuting to save a small law firm earnest lawyer susan takes a high paying case from nick a charming new client who wants to sue a dating website that guarantees love but as the case he's up so do susan and nick's feelings for each other directed by mark stephen johnson written by hillary galanoy and elizabeth hackett starring rachel lee cook heather graham and damon waynes jr You know what? Why not? Why not? I have, I have a feeling you know how this is going to end. Uh, in, in case it does, I'm not going to say because spoilers. But I, reading that description, you kind of figure out what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen to the case? I think I, th- I think I think we're on the same page here. Also on the third, finally, it's season one of Young Wallander, TV mature, crime drama, mystery, premiering... On the third, follow recently graduated police officer Kurt Wallander as he investigates his first case. Uh, the uh, season is six episodes long. Hmm. Created by Ben Harris. Ben, ha- ben Harris. It's based on the Swedish and British series Wallander, so it's like a prequel or something. Prickle. On the fourth, and yeah, we're about to wrap things up. Away, season one. It's a new sci-fi series starring Hilary Swank. An American astronaut struggles with leaving her husband and daughter behind to embark on a dangerous mission with an international space crew. Okay, that's a thing. Created by Andrew Hinderaker, starring Talitha Elenia, Eliana Bateman, Josh Charles, Hillary Swanks. Um, I guess there's ten episodes. Yeah, ten episodes. Okay, ten episodes of this sci-fi drama. Um, here's one that I'm really looking forward to. It's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. 8.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb. Rated R. 2 hours and 14 minutes. A drama horror thriller. Full of misgivings. A young woman must travel with her new boyfriend to his parents' secluded farm. Upon arriving, she comes to question everything she thought she knew about him and herself. Directed by Charlie Goffman. Written by... Charlie Kaufman. Now, here's the thing about Charlie Kaufman. As a writer, right, uh, he's got a couple of... You know, I'm, I'm looking at his, uh, his credits. Five. Five excellent films he's written. And Emilisa... Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, Adaption, and Being John Malkovich. Which is strange, because Being John Malkovich was like his really big breakthrough, you know, as far as films go, right? Um, Adaption was very clever. It seems like something I would do, you know, as far as, oh, I can't figure out what to write about, so I'm going to write about not having anything to write about, you know? And, uh, well, the thing is, before that... 
he wrote for TV, Get a Life, the um, uh, Chris Elliott show about a loser that lives with his parents and is a paper boy, you know, in his 30s. Um, the Danny Carvey show that was super underrated. It was, it was, it was a very good show. And uh, Ned and Stacy was a thing also. Um, Charlie Coffin, he's he's great. Um, I should stop saying that. Oscar winner, and, and we're getting... When was the last time we wrote something? Uh, I know Melissa, it's been five years since we've gotten a Charlie Coffin script. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this bigly. And that'll be available on the 4th. Um, next up is Spirit Writing Free, Writing Academy. It's a Netflix... Oh, part two. It's the net, next set of adventures about this thing from horse writing. Oh, there's the description. In a small western town, a young girl from the city forms a tight bond with wild horse Spirit while having adventures with her friends. Cool. 7.5 out of 10 on the old IMDb's. Apparently it's not bad. It's definitely for the, the smaller kids. It's rated TV Y7 or something like that. Um, next up. It's, it's, you can probably figure it out. I'm trying to wrap this up. Um, Take Me Home Tonight. It's a rated R. 97 minute comedy. 6.3 on the old IMDb. Starring Topher Grace, Anna Ferris, Dan Fogler, Therese Plummer, Chris Pratt. Set in the 80s, four years after graduation, an awkward high school genius uses his sister boyfriend's Labor Day party as the perfect opportunity to make his move on this high school crush. You know, making up for lost time, I guess. I don't know. And finally, yes, finally, this is the last thing. The Lost Okoroshi. 6.4 out of 10 on the old IMDb. 95 minutes action-adventure drama from Nollywood. Haunted by dreams of an ancestral Okoroshi masquerade, a dissolution security guard breaks up, wakes up one morning to find himself transformed into a mute purple spirit in Abamakama's surrealist, surrealist romp through the sprawling city of Lagos. Directed by Abamakama... Also written by and starring Shun Ajayi, Judith Adu, and Tope Tadea. You know what? Go to semicorestudios.com. You'll be able to find out all the links and information there that you need to to find out about Semicore Studio and me. Personally, I gotta get out of here. It's late. Um, I didn't have anybody to, to throw it to tonight. Hopefully, um, Ben, if you're listening, um, I, I want you to know that I'm trying to get everybody to send their positive vibes and positive energies out Hawaii way and uh, let them know that we're thinking about your dad and hope he has a super, super effective recovery. And, um, well, I miss you on the shows here, buddy. Well, until next time...